Everybody talks about Jesus and how much they love him, but they don't have a clue why he had to come and die. This man sinned against God, starting in the very day that he was created. From that moment on, Jesus had to die. That's why I tell you that the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But don't nobody know what Jesus is. They call on the name, but they don't teach nothing about it. But I'm going to show you how this thing went, sisters and brothers. The Lord, when man died, sinned against God, and, and God had to kill him because the way of sin is death, the Lord looked over this earth to try and find somebody that could be clean enough to die for him. And we're going to show you this. Let's go into Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Because the Lord wanted, had to redeem this man. He could not redeem this man through animal sacrifice because we have shown you in other lessons that the wages of sin is death and animal, the blood of bulls and goats could never remove sin. But now, the Lord had to have him a man that could be sacrificed for sin because man is the one that committed the sin. And he looked for one. Let's start in Isaiah 59 and 1. Go ahead and read. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened uh -huh. that it cannot save. Go ahead. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Uh -huh. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Uh -huh. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. The Lord is telling you he can still hear and he can still save. But he, he don't hear no sinner, and he will not save no sinner. Go ahead and read. For your hands are defiled with blood, uh -huh. and your fingers with iniquity. Go ahead. Your lips have spoken lies. Uh -huh. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Uh -huh. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. Go ahead. They trust in vanity and speak lies. Uh -huh. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Now, how can the Lord hear and save these kind of people mm -hmm. that commit all of these sins against him? So he needed somebody that could go down and make an atonement for these people. Skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. And judgment is turned away backward. Uh -huh. And justice standeth afar off. Go ahead. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. We are here now, even after the Lord have came, sisters and brothers. Ain't no truth no more. Ain't no judgment. Ain't no justice. Everybody is lying on the Lord. Go ahead and read. Yeah, truth faileth. Uh -huh. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. Now, all of a sudden, when somebody decides, I'm going to do this thing right, I'm going to keep the dietary law, I'm going to keep the commandments, I'm going to honor the Lord's Sabbath day, you become a prey. Mm -hmm. Everybody started to rag on you because you decided you're going to live according to what's written in the Bible. Go ahead and read. And the Lord saw it. And the Lord saw it. And it displeased him. And he didn't like what he saw. Go ahead and read. That there was no judgment. Uh -huh. And he saw that there was no man. Uh -huh. And he wondered that there was no intercessor. Now he looked and saw the condition of this man and all his sin. He saw there was no judgment. Then he saw that there was no man that could stand in or die for him. And he see and he wondered, why is there no intercessor? There ain't nobody that can see for, intercede for this man. So what did he do? Go ahead and read. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, uh -huh. and his righteousness it sustained him. So his own arm brought salvation, and his righteousness sustained him. Go ahead and read. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, uh -huh. and an helmet of salvation upon his head. Go ahead. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, uh -huh. and was clad with zeal as a cloak. So he got up and girded himself. I'm going to have to do it myself. Skip down to verse 20. And what did he show up at? Go ahead and read. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Uh -huh. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. So what did he do? He girded himself and he went to Jerusalem. He came in the flesh, sisters and brothers, born by a woman. He was God that came, became man, so he could die for the sins of the people. So he girded himself because he couldn't find nobody else that was clean enough to do it. And the Redeemer came to Zion, which is Jerusalem. Let's start at St. John 1 and verse 1. St. John 1 and 1. Okay, go ahead. In the beginning was the Word. Uh-huh. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Now pay attention now. In the beginning was the Word. The Word, that's the spokesman, sisters and brothers. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Go ahead and read. The same was in the beginning with God. That lets you know that he was there, always there in the beginning with God. Skip, uh, uh, go ahead. All things were made by him, uh -huh. and without him was not anything made that was made. And all things was made by him. Who is him? All things were made by the Word, sisters and brothers. The Father just gave the orders. Jesus executed them. 
Skip down to verse 10 and I'll let you know. Go ahead and read. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. And the world didn't even know who he is. The world still don't know who he is. Go ahead and read. He came unto his own. Uh Uh-huh. And his own received him not. And he came to Zion. Didn't the son of a demon should come to Zion? He came to Jerusalem. All of Jerusalem that didn't receive him, but there's some that did. And what did he do with them? Go ahead and read. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. But as many as received him, he gave them the power. What is that? His word. That they might become the sons of God. I mean in the fullest sense of the word. But look what the word. Who came here? Go ahead and read. Even to them that believe on his name. Go ahead. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Uh Uh-huh. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. Go ahead. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look, sisters and brothers, when he was God, in his God form with the Father, he looked over the earth and see, to see if he could find somebody that could die and intercede for this man. He couldn't find nobody among the children of men that was clean enough to die for the sins of the people. So he girded himself, put on his garments, and he came down through man to become man so he could become the sin offered and the intercessor. Let's look at this, how it was happening. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and let's start reading that verse 1. Hebrews 10 and 1. Okay, go ahead. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh-huh. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. See, the Lord had already instituted the animal sacrifice, but that couldn't save man. Mm-hmm. Because it couldn't make you perfect. Perfect is when you become God. Why is it that they could not make you perfect, the law of animal sacrifice? Skip down to verse 4 and read it. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Because it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Mm -hmm. So what had to happen? Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Uh But a body hast thou prepared me. So he said, Sacrifice and offering you didn't like. So you prepared me a body. And let's look at this, sisters and brothers. Because he had to come into the world. He had a flesh and blood body. So being that this body was prepared in heaven and delivered by an angel, this was not the seed of another man. Let me show you what I'm saying. Go to Isaiah 7 and just read one verse, verse 14. Go ahead and read. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. I mean, he coming himself. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and read. Behold, a virgin shall conceive uh-huh. and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which interpreted saying God is with us because God left his throne took on a flesh and blood body that the father made for him. The angel planted into this woman which had never laid with a man which make her a virgin. And he was born. And when he was born, God was with us, mm-hmm. even though he was encased in a flesh and blood body system. Brother. But by what way did he come? Let's go into Hebrews, back up to Hebrews, the second chapter. Hebrews, the second chapter, and start reading at verse 9. Hebrews 2 and 9. Okay, go ahead. But we see Jesus, uh-huh. who was made a little lower than the angels, uh-huh. for the suffering of death. That's why he had to be encased in a flesh and blood body. That's a little lower than the angels. We are, for one purpose, for the suffering of death. Go ahead and read. Crowned with glory and honor, uh-huh. that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So now he's going to take on everybody's sin, and he is going to pay the wages for everybody's sin that would allow him to. So he's going to taste death for every man. Go ahead and read. For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, uh-huh. and bringing many sons unto glory, Go ahead. to make the captain of their salvation Perfect through suffering. So it became him to do this, sisters and brothers. Because in order for him to bring many sons into God's family, he had to become the sin offering. 
He had to die. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh-huh. he also himself likewise took part of the same. Uh-huh. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, looks that is, a, go ahead. the devil. Look, sister and brother, that's why I said in Isaiah 59 that he looked and saw that there was no man. And it, he wondered that there was no intercessor. So he put on his garments and he came himself. By way of flesh and blood. So he took on him the seed of Abraham. That he might come, being that we are flesh and blood, in order to save us, he had to become flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. So he became just like a, a flesh and blood being. Go ahead and read. And delivered them who through fear of death uh-huh. were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For he came to deliver us from death because we were subject to bondage of death since the day that Adam and Eve died of uh, sin in the, in, in the Garden of Eden. Go ahead and read. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, uh-huh. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So that angel came with that body that the father prepared him and injected it into this virgin woman. And he became a flesh and blood being by way of Abraham's seed. But then which was filling, which was fulfilling what he had already promised to Abraham when Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. He said, because you had obeyed my voice. In your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And that seed is talking Jesus. So he needed a body so his body could be sacrificed for the sins of the people. Let's go to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Isaiah chapter 53, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Isaiah 53, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Who hath believed our report? Uh Uh-huh. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You know, nobody believes our report because don't nobody know who Jesus is. And nobody see the arm of the Lord because they don't know who Jesus is. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Go ahead and read. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant uh-huh. and as a and as a root out of a dry ground. Go ahead. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men, uh-huh. a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh-huh. And we hid as it were our faces from him. But now everybody loves the Lord, but he is despised and disrespect and rejected of men. Go ahead and read. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Uh Uh-huh. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Look, he hath borne our grief and he carried our sorrow. He was the one that was stricken of God. Go ahead and read. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Because Jesus didn't commit one sin. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquity. Uh-huh. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Go ahead. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are the ones that are healed with his stripes, sisters and brothers. Remember, he became the intercessor. He was the sin offering. Go ahead and read. All we like sheep have gone astray. Uh-huh. We have turned everyone to his own way. Go ahead. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Because if he don't walk away with it, sisters and brothers, the whole creation is lost. So the Lord hath laid upon him the sins of us all. Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh-huh. He hath put him to grief. Uh-huh. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Now Hebrews the 10th chapter said, when thou shalt make his body an offering mm-hmm. for sin. Here it said his soul, because the body and the soul is one and the same, right. sisters and brother. He shall make his soul an offering for sin. Skip down to verse 12 and read it. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. Uh-huh. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Go ahead. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. So now, he was poured out unto death. He died. He said he was numbered with the transgressors. He had two thieves on the cross uh-huh. with him, didn't he? Go ahead and read. And he bare the sin of many uh-huh. and made intercession for the transgressors. So now, he's the one that bare the sins of many, of anybody that would come to him. And he is the one that's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for anybody that come to him. With a pure heart. Well, let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And we're going to start reading that verse 6. Uh, 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 because he said he made his offering, his, his body an offering for sin, sisters and brothers, his soul. Because Jesus is a sin offering. People just don't understand that. I don't know what they understand about Jesus, but I never really understand that. Because if you understood that he was a sin offering, then you'd stop sinning. Skip down, uh, start at verse 6. Go ahead. 
and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Because they didn't remove nothing. Skip down to nine and go ahead. Then said he, uh -huh. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's why he needed a body. Because God needed a sin offering from among men to save man. Mm -hmm. So he got up off the throne and came into the realm of man, became a man, and he died for the sins of the people. But he died one time and one time only. Mm -hmm. Because there was all that's necessary. Skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Uh -huh. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. By a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So now that Jesus died, now you go to him and pray to the Father in his name, sisters and brothers. Because the... the Sacrifice and the atonement have been made, but you have to tap into it. But everybody talks about this, sister and brother. Let's go into Zechariah, the 19th chapter. What Jesus had to do, he had to do because he tell you the lamb, the book tell you the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. All the prophets knew what had to happen. All of them told you what had to happen because all of them are tapped in to this great work of salvaging this man that went shipwrecked in the Garden of Eden. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. 9 and 9. Okay, read it. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Uh -huh. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation, uh -huh. lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Now, that's who is our, the, the king of Jerusalem or the king of Zion? Jesus, sister and brother. That's why he came in riding up on an ass. Because the prophets say he's going to come lonely and he's going to come humble. And look what he had to do once he got here. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. By the blood of his covenant, through the sacrifice of Jesus, he has sent forth us who was imprisoned under a death sentence. And couldn't get off money, sister and brother. By the blood of Jesus were we free. Now let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Because before Jesus came and died, sisters and brothers, there was no way we could get off money death. We was locked into eternal death. We not only was going to die the first death, we was going to die the second death. But when he came and sprung us, he did it by his blood. But he had to become man because he was already God. Let us first written the 15th chapter and verse 1. 15 and 1. Go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, uh -huh. which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Go ahead. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. He said, look, I'm declaring unto you the gospel I brought to you. The same gospel will save you if you keep in memory mm -hmm. the things that I have preached to you. Mm -hmm. This thing that once saved, always saved, that is a pit that's dug to get you trapped in the death, sisters and brothers. You have to remember what Paul and the apostles and the prophets taught you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to fall off the wagon. Go ahead and read. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. He let you know what I brought you according to the Scripture. What are the Scripture? From Genesis to Malachi, sisters and brothers. Nothing happened when Jesus knew. All the prophets told you about it. Go ahead and read. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. And he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. He wasn't buried on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. He was buried in the middle of the week which is the Wednesday, and he rose Saturday evening before sundown, according to the Scripture. This is what Paul was telling you. Skip down to verse 12 and go ahead. 
Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, uh -huh. how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, you got people running around saying there ain't no resurrection of the dead. If that's the case, then we're wasting our time. Go ahead and read. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. If Christ, there be no resurrection, then Christ is not risen. Skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. And if Christ be not, be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sin. And if Jesus had, have not been raised from the dead, our belief is vain. Mm -hmm. Because we are still in our sin. Because he was a sin off and sister and brother. He had to die, but he had to be raised too. Let's go into Romans the fifth chapter. Romans chapter five. All this is here, sisters and brothers, so we will know what the Lord is doing. We will understand how to get out under this death sentence. Because even though the sacrifice has been made, if you don't do what the Lord said, you're still under the death sentence. All that simple. Romans 5 and verse 8. Go ahead. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, he's commended his love that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. Go ahead and read. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, uh -huh. we shall be saved from wrath through him. Now, being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That is what the day of atonement is all about, sisters and brothers. Look, we was reconciled by the blood. But we are saved by his life because once the, the, the lamb is killed for your sins, then the lamb have to walk off with your sin. That's why on day of atonement they had two goats, sisters and brothers. One goat died and the other one had all the sins put up on his head. Mm -hmm. One represented the sin offering, the other represented the high priest that walks away with your sin, taking it upon himself. Go ahead and read. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, uh -huh. much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We shall be saved by his life. That's why Paul said, if he don't be raised, you're yet in your sin. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. by whom we have now received the atonement. We joy in God by Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. He made the atonement when he died for us, sisters and brothers. Because he was a sin offering. And people just don't understand that. He was a sin offering. Now let's go into Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Because when you hear people talking about Jesus and you go in here and you read the Bible, you wonder who they're talking about. Somebody else has stole the Lord's name. Because what you're saying is, don't, uh, 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 is not attributed to him. What you said about this Jesus that's taught in the Sunday churches, he don't, don't, none of it is mentioned in the Bible. 9 and 13. Hebrews 9 and 13. Go ahead. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean uh -huh. sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, Go ahead. how much more shall the blood of Christ, uh -huh. who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Look at the blood of bulls and goats to keep you from getting killed on the spot. How much more the blood of Jesus will give you will keep you from dying eternal death. Mm. Go ahead, uh, eternal death. Go ahead and read. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament. Uh -huh. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So look, he is the one that's the mediator. Because when he came and died, he set it up that the whole creation could be saved, even the one that's died before us. That's a big thing, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 28 and read it. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Uh -huh. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So he came to bear the sins of many. And all those that believe in him and get baptized in his name and become on his blood and become a part of the new covenant, he is going to save when he come back. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And start reading at verse 22. Hebrews 10 and 22. Go ahead. Let us draw near with a true heart uh -huh. and full assurance of faith. Go ahead. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now we got to draw near with a clean head, with righteousness, a mind that wants to keep God's law. Mm. Let us draw near. Go ahead and read. For if we sin... 
For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifices for sin. You better listen to that, sister and brother. If we sin willfully, after we have see, received the knowledge of the truth, there is no more sacrifice for sin. Jesus ain't going to die for you no more. Mm -hmm. Animals ain't going to die for you no more. You're going to die for yourself. Mm -hmm. But what death is that? Go ahead and read. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. All you have to look for, sisters and brothers, is the lake of fire. You, man sinned against God by breaking his commandments. In order to keep from killing man, man put an animal in his place and he killed an animal for so long. Then Jesus came and died, therefore for ain't no more animals being killed. And Jesus rose, therefore he ain't going to be killed no more. Therefore, there is no more sacrifice for sin. If you sin not and you know better, all you have to look forward to is the lake of fire. Because the sin offering have been made one time. Thank you for your time. Join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log into our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you.